My name is Vanessa, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to Social Media Monday, Tools for Connecting on the VISTA Campus webinar. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. I will now like to turn the call over to Ms. Stephanie Grocott. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hello. Thanks, Vanessa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Vista Campus Tor Tools for Connecting web shop. My name is Stephanie Grocott. I'm the Project and Corporate Coordinator at Campaign Consultation. Um, I just wanted to briefly go over a few tips using WebEx, um, and if you just want to make a note of some of these numbers, if you lose your internet connection, you can reconnect using the link that was emailed to you that you used to join us today. Um, if you lose your phone connection, you can redial the phone number and rejoin. And if you have any WebEx support issues, you can dial 1-866-29-3239. Uh, we're also recording this webinar, and we're going to be posting it on the Vista Campus Social Media Monday landing page, along with the archive of all our previous web shops. All the links during this webinar will be made available at the end of the presentation. So let me introduce you to today's presenters. We have Elizabeth Matthews, the VISTA Alumni Outreach and Support Specialist at the Corporation for National and Community Service, and Danielle Ricks, the Social Media Specialist from Campaign Consultation, Inc. All right. This is Liz. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us for this Social Media Monday web shop. Uh, the purpose of these web shops is to highlight online tools that are available to you to help achieve the goals of your VAD and also further the mission of the organization that you are with. Um, so we're going to give you specific examples of how you can apply these tools to your everyday. Um, and these web shops are hosted by technology experts. That's why we have Danielle on the phone. I do not claim to be the technology expert. Um, and we also have VISTA members and alums that help to share examples of how they're actually using these tools um, uh, on a daily basis. And today we have Michael Boswell, who's actually a um, brand new alum, and he is going to share with with us a little bit later on in the presentation. And I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to Danielle to give you instructions on our poll. Thanks so much, um, Liz. And again, thank you everyone for joining us. We really appreciate you coming and being a part of this web shop. So we wanted to sort of take a temperature in the room and get an idea of who's doing what out there, and that will help guide us in our web shop today. So if you would take a moment to please fill out the poll, we'd like to know in your role are you responsible for marketing, communications, or social media, and we want to know if you visited the VISTA campus, and if so, are you using any of the communication tools featured on the campus, and specifically the social media tools, which we'll be showing you today? And then how are you looking to connect with others, uh, promote your program, build relationships, and professional network, share tools and resources? And if uh, you answer those questions, that will kind of help us get an idea of who's on the line and then how we can best help you. So thanks so much. And now I'd like to go over the agenda today and start about getting started in social media. And we're going to go over some tips uh, for you, your social media plan, roles and responsibilities. Uh, as Liz said a little bit earlier, Michael is going to come in and he's going to give us a case study and specifically show you how he used, uh, in his role, how he used social media at Campus Compact. And then we're going to go over some campus resources for social media. I'm not sure if you're aware of all the resources that are online in the VISTA campus, and so we want to make sure we have those available to you, and how you can connect with VISTA online and our different sites and the different promotions and things, campaigns that we have going on. We'll make sure that we'll leave time for question and answers. So um, if our questions, Vanessa will open up the line, and you can go ahead and ask them. And in the meantime, you can add them to the chat, and we'll get to them as we go along. First thing that you want to do when you're talking about um, your your plan, how do you start in social media, and we can go ahead and advance that slide, is developing your plan. Um, so the exact way you employ social media tools will depend on your, your mission, your goals, and the target audience that you're trying to reach. 
But it's safe to say that every organization needs to take a serious look at life standards and components of any social media plan. This rings true for nonprofits as well. And that's adding a blog, setting up a nonprofit page on Facebook, fit sharing, um, having one or more microblogging sites like Twitter, and then connecting with colleagues in the community through LinkedIn. So this particular plan right here will have you it's like a ticker for you to think about what is your objective, what is your strategy to engage and promote or network, what is your timeline, and very important to decide early on how often you're going to post and how many places you're going to post. When you're starting out, you may not want to be everywhere all times. Um, so you want to think about what kind of content you have and what makes the best sense. And then rules and responsibilities is just as important as the timeline. Who is going to be responsible for the implementation? How many per week are you going to spend? And what are the specific specific responsibilities, and we're going to get into that a little bit more, the responsibilities, Liz will dive into that in a bit. And then evaluation, how will you monitor and evaluate your social media plan? In marketing, we call it ROI, return on investment. So how do you know if your social media plan is actually working? And then how will you use that data to improve your practice? Meaning having information and knowing how many people tweet you and how many people liked your Facebook page, that's great. But what are you going to do with that information? How are, how are you going to use that to improve your community? communication and your engagement with your audience, and how you collect and implement that feedback. Now, look about social media tools. We're talking about the platforms that we use. Uh, the big ones are Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, LinkedIn, and certainly there are many, many, many others that can be used. And a lot of drives that information is the kind of content that you have and what you have to share in the space. So you want to make sure that, that before you jump out there that you have enough information, content that is, to share when you're starting these platforms. Now, I'm not sure if we have the poll results. If we do, we can share them, and if not, we'll go on to the next slide. Matt, um the majority of our participants uh, use social media as their main role. 71% um, have already visited the Vista campus. Um, sorry. You communication tools featured on the Vista campus. Most are not, um, so we'll talk about that. And for looking to connect with others, um, people most are looking to build relationships for, uh, and professional networks. That's great. You are absolutely in the right place then. That's good to know. We're going to um, talk to you about some of the things that the majority of you all can use in your communications plans. We're very glad that you visit the Vista campus, but a little bit later on, we're going to really dive into the communications and specifically the social media section of the Vista campus. There are so many tools available for you as you plot out your course in social media, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But first, I want to turn it over to Liz, and she's going to talk about relationships and management and how do you do that and how can you involve everyone in the process as you're getting started. Great. Thanks, Danielle. So this is a worksheet that we put together that may or may not be helpful for you, um, but we're just going to take a look at what we've set up here um, for more things for you to think about. So for the at the beginning, um, think about who you're going to need to involve. Um, clearly you want to make sure your supervisor is in on this, especially since so many of you, this is the main thing that you're doing. So I would imagine your supervisor is, is well aware of, of the social media um, tool you're, you're using and is involved with that. Um, perhaps there are other staff members that it is appropriate for them to, to play a part. Um, perhaps they help contribute content or keep an eye on things. Um, you may have some board members engaged, depending on the size of your organization. And um, perhaps you have some volunteers that have been with the organization for a long time who have expressed interest in this um, and are, are helping out as well. Um, most importantly, though, you really want to make sure that you know who the main uh, decision maker is going to be, um, whether that's your supervisor or um, if he or she is not around, who is um, able to help you out. Um, because sometimes you need to make uh, quick decisions. Uh, perhaps if you're using Facebook, there may be a post that's inappropriate, and you need to know how to handle that and how the organization wants you to handle that. Um, so what are some potential barriers or roadblocks? Um, 
this could be perhaps there's some staff members that are not supportive of social media. Maybe they just don't understand how this is helpful and they think that you're spending all your time checking your personal Facebook page. Um, so you need to know how to handle them. And perhaps what you decide to do is um, host a training for staff so that they can see what the different tools are and how you're using them. And that way you might be able to to convert them, and, and uh, perhaps they could even submit a, a blog post or you know, somehow contribute in another way to what you're doing. Um, so again, here, really put down who the decision makers are. Make sure you know that. Um, and also when you need to, to check in with them. So do you have a supervisor who really wants to know before you post anything, or do you have a little bit more freedom and you just have some guidelines and you know in general um, when you're supposed to check in and um, how you want, how the, the person who's your ultimate decision maker, how they want you to work together. Those are just some things to keep in mind in terms of relationships and management. And um, if you haven't already done it, you um, might have some stories to share later on um, that helped you learn uh, about potential roadblocks or, or barriers. So we look forward to hearing from you a little bit later on if you have some advice for others to share. Thanks, Lynn. So as we continue on, for those of you who are just getting started, if, if you're already knee-deep in social media, this is um, – not new news to you, but if you're just getting started, these are some administrative tips. This is a worksheet, just like the one part two, and a PDF of this presentation will be available at the on the Social Media Monday course page on the Vista campus, so you can print out this worksheet and the one that Liz just went over to just go rest a checklist, make sure that you have identified the right people in each role and what makes sense within the scope of their responsibilities. This will create a smoother interface between you and your audience. So you want to know the key tasks for the administrators, and that is setting permissions, who should have what kind of permissions. There are several different uh, levels of permissions in Facebook, so you need to decide who gets to do what, who's able to edit the page, who is able to remove objectable uh, content, and who can on behalf of the organization, office, or entity, and then who is responding to comments. Identify team members. You may be a lone wolf out there, and you may be all by yourself, but you want to identify who is involved in providing content, and whoever is involved in providing content needs to understand the audience and the goals of the plan. So it's very important to set out those goals and make sure that that person understands them. Then view the page regularly, and again, that varies from person to person. Michael's going to share a strategy with us and how he did it for Facebook and Twitter and, and why he chose the times of day and the frequency. And that's going to depend um, very from organization to organization. But you need to ha also have enough basic information to answer questions. And I have basic information to monitor our Facebook page. And when I get stuck, I turn to Liz and I say, this is above my grade. Please <laughs> help me answer this question. Um, and you want to sure you honor the voice and the tone set for the page. Just FYI, our Twitter page, our Twitter feed is far more casual, a very casual voice. And our Facebook page, the Vista, AmeriCorps Vista Facebook page, is much more formal. And we decided that early on to those different voices. But you want to make sure that you're very clear with your supervisor on how, how the voice and the tone will be for your pages. And that, that team main member needs to respect the roles of the protocol agreed upon. So you don't want to vary. <laughs> Once you set them and you set that tone, that's what people are going to get used to, and that's what you want to kind of stick to. Now let's move on, and Liz is going to talk about roles in social media. I mean, if you haven't thought about these before, and again, if you're new to social media, you need to be thinking about these. If you've been in it for a while, I'm sure that you're doing this, but you just may not have even realized that you're falling into one of these three categories. So let's start with the gatekeeper. This person is responsible for posting the content and really is checking in on a daily basis to um, look at different posts, as well as um, putting content up. Um, so really keeping an, a close eye on, on the activity for all of your social media um, presence. And many of you may know about Hootsuite, but um, there's several different tools out there. But the way you, if you have both Facebook and Twitter and other social media tools, you can put them all in one site so you can monitor them much more easily. 
Um, so the gatekeeper is really important, and that, that's really Danielle in our situation. Um, and then an administrator is somebody who checks in regularly and also calls attention to any specific questions or concerns, um, has the ability to remove content uh, and comments if necessary, um, but works with the gatekeeper and content provider um, to address most issues in the, in the space. So working together with the gatekeeper and um, having a firm grasp on that. And um, having open communication between those two is very important. So we talk every other week um, to discuss sort of when and what we want to post. Um, and we also kind of work off of each other. I will often post jobs, and Danielle will perhaps post stories from um, alums and current members and what's going on with them. And sometimes we have posts that um, require attention. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes it's a posting that a VISTA member has put up there. Perhaps they are voicing that they really don't like their assignment. Um, they're having an issue with their sponsor site. And that's really important for us to react to. Um, we want to put a public message up there saying that we acknowledge they're having an issue and then um, suggest that we talk offline and then get in touch with them so that we can hopefully improve their situation. Um, we've also had incidents of VISTAs who are probably doing it with, with good intent, but posting messages such as the National Service. And hopefully you all remember from your PO, pre-service orientation, that you need to abide by the Hatch Act. And we'll get into that a little bit more later, but this is definitely a violation against the Hatch Act. There could be no lobbying. Um, on our site. So that's something that we really have to watch carefully. And perhaps given whatever it is, the, the end of your organization, there may be sensitive issues that you need to watch for. Perhaps you're a mentoring organization and a volunteer innocently posts a, a picture of them um, reading to the child that they're, that they're tutoring or mentoring. And um, there's probably protection against that child, and, and their, their photograph really should not be up on Facebook. Um, hopefully your volunteers would know that, but you never know, and sometimes these things happen. So it's really good to keep an eye on everything and then know what your plan of action is if something did happen so that you can act quickly. Um, and act publicly, too, so that people know that you're addressing the needs of the organization. Um, so in the content provider, this, this can be a variety of folks and besides yourself, um, like I said earlier, it could be um, other staff members, it could be volunteers, it could be the folks in the community that you're serving that are part of your online community. Um, but you definitely want to be in communication with folks that are providing content for your blog or um, on, on Facebook and so forth. So that is overview of just trying to keep in mind who your gatekeeper, your administrator, and who your content providers are for your various outlets. Thanks, Liz. And I'm going to shameless plug right here and say that we are always looking for content for yes. our Facebook page and for the VISTA campus. And so if you have stories to share of your VISTA experience, uh, please do post them. If you have a blog and you'd like to draw attention to the blog, there's a list of VISTA blogs on the campus in the forums. And, um, time to time I take them and I highlight them and the good work that the VISTAs are doing in uh, out there in national service. So we love to highlight you all too and we, we depend on you for our content. So uh, that's a shameless plug for our Facebook page. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and now we're going to move on over to Michael. And Michael is the VISTA alumni now, just brand new alumni with um, Campus Compact. And uh, tell us a little bit about your your previous role, Michael. Hey, Danielle. Uh, in my previous role with uh, Campus Compact, I served at their national office as the VISTA leader, and I would work with um, different VISTA leaders, program managers, and uh, executive directors at the state affiliates through Campus Compact, and there were 27 of those during my year. So I would, I would work with them to, uh, to kind of find resources. We had a couple webinars, and while all of that, I also was managing the social media for the organization. That's a big, heavy lift, Michael. Let's go over to your <laughs> Facebook page, and um, let's see what's, what's going on there. And we're going to go ahead and have you share your desktop. 
top with that. All right. And while you're doing that, um, some of the things I wanted to talk about are, well, let's just very simply with what kind of things did you post? Well, it was sort of uh, when I started, I, I wasn't sure really how to begin. It was my first experience with, you know, full-on social media for an organization. So I kind of looked back and back and saw what had been posted and, and kind of who the audience was. So I tried to kind of target them or as best as I could. And so... I looked for different news items, job opportunities, press releases directly from our office, uh, conferences where people could register, webinars, um, different reports that were released, uh, some original content and some quotes. And I really tried to sort of, you know, see work one week, maybe it wouldn't work another. Scroll down and show us some of the things that are currently on the page. Sure. So, um, I actually finished in the end of July, so uh, the most recent ones, I think I scheduled one while I was uh, actually after I had left, and then there, um, is, there are a few from before I, I finished. And so I tried to share resources from uh, one of the programs within our office, which is a video on the right side that was done by uh, one of our programs, or one of the former programs, I guess, uh, since I'm no longer with Campus Compact, and uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a video done by one of the programs, so I was trying to sort of feature a different part of our office, and one of our state affiliates actually uh, hired a new executive director, so there's a, a picture of her and a welcome. Talk and about what kind of things worked and what kind of things didn't work as you were experimenting. Okay. Um, well. I tried to experiment. I tried to see, you know, when should I post, how often, and what kind, what types of content. And I found that sort of a, a persistent uh, posting a few times a week was, was pretty good, a nice response. And I think really the best uh, posts were ones with with pictures, with with something that really sort of drew the eye of of someone on social media, and uh, other things that had, had a Kind of a personal connection where they where they named a person. So, actually, my last post as the vice leader was wishing myself well, which felt really strange to do, but that actually had the most sort of views and um, it's actually one of the most interacted with Can we of all posts during my year. Yes, yeah, sure. And so it's the one on uh, the left side. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then you responded to yourself. That's great. I did. That felt it felt very strange, and <laughs> I, I had to remember because when you're administering a page, and um, you, if it's as yourself, uh, sometimes you can do it as the page. So I could have accidentally commented by saying, you know, page, thank you. I've enjoyed working with the network as the page. So I have accidentally done that once in the past, so I learned my lesson. So, and we want to go over that. Um, uh, just in case there's some new people to social media. When you are administrator for the page, as he said, you can see up at the top right under Facebook, it will tell you you are posting, commenting, and liking as, camping, as campus compact. You can change it to yourself. Now, here's, here's what you need to understand, though. When you change it to yourself, if you're the admin, it's still going to show up that way. So you really have to figure out what your settings are going to be, and that happens at the administration panel. And we do have a full-blown social media day web shop on um, the new timeline for Facebook, and we have a link that's available for you so that you can go and see the archive. And we go through step-by-step step how you work the new timeline for Facebook. But I didn't want to just skirt over that one in case people are going, what? <laughs> and Daniel, this is Liz. Can I jump in here, too? Sure. Um, you all may also find that it's helpful to create a separate work Facebook account. So really keep your personal and your professional separate. Um, is a, a lot cleaner in the in the long run, so it, I just wanted to offer that up. It is cleaner, and um, a couple of things to keep in mind is you're going to need to use a separate email address when you do that. Facebook discourages accounts, but we all do it because um, we have to have a personal and professional look as admins, and Liz is absolutely right. It just makes it a lot cleaner and a lot easier if you do have a professional Facebook page, and that way you don't have to worry about accidentally posting and people seeing your beach scenes from your vacation. <laughs> um, so you use Hootsuite, and we wanted to talk about how, how one, you managed one of the 
Hootsuite is one of the tools, very popular with many of us, uh, Michael, and how you manage to do your posts and the difference between your audience on Facebook and your audience on Twitter and how you engage them differently, if at all. Um, yeah, well, after one of the social media Mondays I attended, I learned about uh, different organizations and the different um, platforms they're using to manage their uh, social media, so I actually started using Hootsuite. We're going to love that plug, Michael. That was completely <laughs> unsolicited, people. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and it's something that uh, over the year proved to be more and more useful as right now it's actually updating itself, and I got to see um, kind of what, what I'd posted under the sent tweets and on the Facebook page um, on the left on the, the wall posts that uh, had been uh, compiled, and it was it was really, really nice, and it was really easy, and we actually do have a couple, or the, org the organization has a couple of accounts, actually dummy accounts, that can manage uh, the social media, and so this way I've actually got those logged up, lo logged in on the top as well if I want to look at those. And uh, it was, it's was it been very useful, and one of my favorite things actually has been the scheduling in advance of, of posts. And I actually, while I was serving, this never worked, but now I can actually look back and it shows me the calendar of all of the, the posts that I had scheduled. And it was really, really useful because in July I went to the National Conference on Volunteering and Service and um, I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing and so I scheduled some posts for that week. And it was really, really helpful to you know maintain a presence and still provide useful resources for that week while I was out of the office. And um, more shame this plug, we do have a Social Media Monday website on that as well, on planning your tweets and so forth in advance. And um, that's great. I just learned something from Michael. I didn't know the calendar feature showed up, so thank you for teaching me something, Michael. That's fantastic. Um, can you tell me how you decided to, to post the same thing on Facebook and Twitter, or, or do you use them differently? Well, I think for the most part, uh, a lot of the posts are the same. Uh, sometimes the language will change so that I can fit, or I was able to fit in the correct number of characters, but at other times uh, some things are actually are different, um, and that can be, once it was because I accidentally forgot to include the Facebook page, but other times it was when I was live tweeting, it was sort of just to keep that, uh, I was live tweeting at the, the conference on volunteering service, and so that was to sort of keep the conversation going and to share news instantly. So. I, th I think, in general, the, the messages were the same, but sometimes it was used differently. And, and I think um, through Twitter, recently, where I ended, there were actually better interactions, better conversa conversations, sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, it was actually where more people clicked on uh, links or viewed things. But on Twitter, I, there was more sort of communication with, um, for one example, uh, the board of directors at Campus Compact elected six new members, and so for one week, for six straight days, I sort of said, and introducing from the nutmeg state, Susan Herbst of UConn, and one of them was the president of Wagner, and one of their students responded, and so I had kind of this a back and forth a little bit with him. It was nice, and that was something that happened, I think, a little less on, on Facebook. Okay, Michael's going to stick around with us, so if you have questions for him, you can add it in the chat there and then, of course, we're going to open up the chat feature a little bit later on. And what we'd like to do now is grab right back from Michael, and we're going to go over to the VISTA campus. I know that many of you said you have been on the VISTA campus before, which is fantastic. We're so glad you visited. But you did not know that there were tools available for you on the campus um, specifically for communication. So we want to make sure that we show you that. Uh, there's great, valuable tools there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab right. We're actually uh, Steph is going to give me right, and then we're we'll on over here, and I'm going to share my desktop. And so, for those of you who have been on the campus before, you know that this is how you enter for the vistas. And I'm going to go ahead and lock in, which you will be required to do to get on the campus. If you didn't have your account, we please ask that you create it. It's so easy. Anybody actually, Danielle, just to interject here, everybody should have been on the campus.
this at one point because you had to take your terms, conditions, and benefits course um, when you were coming to PSO. Right. So great. So for sure everybody's updated their profile. And you're just going to go to the work, and then you'll see this part of the bento box on communications and marketing. And can everyone see that? Everyone? Great. And then we'll click on here. And there are four different areas that are highlighted under there. And each one has courses under them that are going to benefit you in your role in marketing and communication. Today, we're going to go into using social media. So if you click on that section, the very first thing that pops up is the e-organizer, which is a course, and it's done in Flash. And it's really a fantastic tool, you guys. I'm hoping that you get an opportunity to look through it. Um, this is the home. And it will talk about building a sense of community. It will talk about things for your website, web forums, photo albums and slideshows, online petitions and surveys, e-newsletters and action alerts, alert, social media, net, social networking sites. And as you click through, it will talk a little bit more in depth depending upon what you're clicking on. But social media is all of this. Um, e-newsletters, believe it or not, are part of social media, blogs, podcasts, Podcasts, which are video casts, online petition surveys, again, using the Google Calendar, social networking site. It's going to help you with those calendars and events and the different things that can attach to it. And for those of you who are doing fundraising, uh, this talk about donate buttons, charity portals, Google, just about everything that you need to know. When you click side, media, branding, and visibility, Meetings, presentations, and sharing information, lots of valuable information. Now you'll see some of this is repeated section to section because it crosses lines. And this is really important too, stakeholders and strategic partnerships. You want to identify your strategic partners and you want to identify them via your social networking site. And then how do you cultivate relationships with those stakeholders and other strategic partners? And again, some of these things are repeated. And volunteers. Many of you will be working with volunteers. So how do you create a sense of community using social networks and photo albums and slideshows? How does that uh, build a community and a sense of community? And recruitment. I know that's important for many people. We've done webshops on just recruitment of loan and how can you use your social networking and social media sites for that. Communications is always important no matter what you're doing, particularly with volunteers, using the listservs using these different uh, tools that are going to pop up again across the line, and then management. How do you manage these tools? And one of them is Google Docs and Spreadsheet. Now, we'll back out this, and when we do that, we'll go down one more deep, and that's the Social Media Monday, and that's what you're on right now. And so all of our Social Media Mondays, our recordings and our PDFs of these slides that you're, you're seeing right now are available in archives. We have gone all the way back to 2009. I will warn you that things have changed from 2009. So um, it's still valuable information, but the archives from 2010 are really what's going to help you if you're concerned about how to use Facebook and Twitter and you want to know the difference between the two. This is web shop for you, social media top three, the places you want to be. Social media success, thinking ahead and keeping it going, goes back to what Michael was talking about. If you're going away for a little while and you want to keep that strategy going and keep them engaged, that's the web shop that you want. We all have a web shop on LinkedIn, and for people like Michael who are uh, have done their two years, their term as a VISTA, and they're looking for jobs, these two may one tools for transitioning, and then the LinkedIn making it work for you. These are two web shops that will be very beneficial with different uh, things that are going to help you in that quest. And then for 2011, um, all of these are going to be important for you, particularly sustaining the social media momentum. Again, that's if you're going away, or how do you vacate? How do you manage it on a conference? How do you plan pre-tweet? Powerful presentations, that's great for anybody who's doing presentations. And then, you know, you can read through these and the ones that are going to make the best sense for you. And then these are the two big ones that we did, um, the four big ones that we did this year, and one of them being the Facebook one and using the two new timeline. So I'm going to battle this one more time, and we're going to go to the Vista Meetup, and Liz is going to tell you a little bit about that page. And I'm going to draw while she talks. Sure. So, um, 
we started doing meetups this late last fall, and um, this is just one other way for folks to get together. Um, obviously, it starts online with meetup, and then you can usually meet up in person, which is very exciting in, in real life. Um, so we hosted one here in D.C. in early December, and it was really just to, for networking purposes. Um, we didn't have a formal training, um, but that's obviously you can do that too. Um, but the good thing about using Meetup as a tool is that you can get folks from the Meetup community that um, might be interested in what you're doing in addition to whomever you might email and invite to the event. Um, and uh, we were able to get about 75 people, which was great. And there have been other meetups hosted by state offices and VISTAs in uh, Wyoming and North Carolina and New Jersey and um, Maryland. So there's definitely it's, it's a popular um, way of engaging folks first online and then getting them together either for the purpose of of socializing or networking or training. So just know that that's another tool that may be appropriate um, for you. Perhaps you want to recruit some new volunteers that might, way, might be a way to reach out uh, to community members and have them come in and learn more about your organization and, and potentially volunteer. You can see from where Dunn is going, there's all kinds of tools here from what is a meetup to how to and there's a template for name tags um, and all kinds of check-in sheets, sign-in sheets, agenda, so forth. And then you can look at where to host, um, selecting a venue. This can be a book place or perhaps it's your office space. Um, and then tips on preparing for your meetup, um, hosting, and reaching out to, to your members. Hopefully this is uh, helpful to you. So that's pretty much meet up. And this, this page is available on the VISTA campus, and when you click on it, it will take you to the Meetup site so that you can uh, sign up and start sharing. Mm -hmm. One more click down, and there's a social media guide that will give you some more information. This is a PDF for you, and it will be great info. I don't know what's not coming up. That is one more time. It is there. I promise it's there. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So um, it was done in 2008, but there's still great information. And it's an introduction to social media one-on-one, -on -one, the benefits to this stuff, some of the cautions, which we're going to actually go over with you a little bit later on, and um, blogging, and just sort of the, the entry into what social media is in case you were not familiar with it. And then as you go down more, we talk about marketing your program online. This is also a PDF. And then finally, the forms. And Liz, can you tell them a little bit about the forms and why these are important? Sure. These are really fun. It's a great way to communicate with other VISTAs, leaders. Um, perhaps you're having, you know, you're really struggling on how to survive on your stipend. So you can, you know, post a message. It says, it, you know, does anybody have tips for living on the stipend? Um, they, that's just there's just a V Cafe as one of the forums where you can post any sort of topic. Um, yeah, if you want to go to the to the forums, and then um, as you scroll down, there's more you in the work. So this is if you have something specific question that you want to ask or get advice on, perhaps something having to do with your VAD. Um, you'll see there's a job board. Um, that is a great resource. So, Michael, stay tuned to the job board. You may see a position posted, and a lot of times there are positions um, from a federal agencies looking for people who have non-competitive eligibility, which all this is, you know, for a year after their service, they have that status. So that can help you in the federal job search process. Um, so that's a good resource. And then the Avis alumni, people who want to stay in touch, the uh, alumni forum. So it's just a great space to uh, reach out to your cohorts across the country. Okay, thank you. Now, um, Steph is going to take right back from me. And um, 
Actually, no, you're not, Steph. I'm sorry, I told a sieve. I am going to stop sharing and click through these because we've talked about them connecting with other meetups. And we wanted to go over a little bit about sites. And these are the four biggies for us. We're in many other places, a few other places, not many, but a few places. And these are the ones we spend the most time. So um, when we very first started, we realized that uh, AmeriCorps Vista had enough content to be in all four places. Now, you may not in your organization, you really want to think about that. Do you have enough video to upload to Twitter to have a channel that's um, vibrant? Do you have photos for Flickr? Uh, to have enough information to tweet instantly with instant information on um, Twitter, and do you have enough information to aggregate a Facebook page? But we did, so we have these four spaces. For Twitter, we use that for instant information, and all times you'll see job postings for leader positions or uh, organization sponsors looking for Vista and there have a call out for that. We held the actions, for instance, today's Twitter feed had at least three call-outs to this webinar, and many of you may have found out about this from Twitter. There will be some PSO exchanges we just started, so we're very excited about that, and um, the hashtag is generally PSO and that city, so for Atlanta it was hashtag which is the pound sign, PSOATL, or pound sign, hashtag for PSO Boston, And that just started a couple of weeks ago. We're very excited to see people tweeting us live from the PSO, and we make sure that we're available to tweet back. And we highlight this is in the news, and that's generally how we use our Twitter page. For Facebook, and this is particularly because of the new timeline, and it goes back to something that Michael said, it has become much more visual, so we do a lot of photos. One of the things that's getting a lot of response are the vintage posters. People love seeing those, and people love seeing pictures of themselves, and we love to highlight the good work that the Vistas are doing. And um, as Liz said, we all highlight uh, positions, uh, various positions and job postings that are available. And I just want to reiterate, we, there are two different voices. There are two different tones. Twitter is much more relaxed and informal. Facebook is much more um, formal. Those are the two spaces that you will find us. And then Liz is, going to, Liz is going to talk about the other two spaces where we have content and you can find AmeriCorps Vista. Sure. So YouTube, um, obviously there are videos there, and they're mostly created by Vistas. We also have some that um, we've created here at headquarters that are about Vista, which may be helpful to you as you talk to community members and they need to understand what VISTA is and what CNCS is and how it's um, related to the work of your organization. So if you get inspired, you can post a video and then we will view it and approve it and then it will become public for everybody to see. But we encourage you to um, get creative. There's really some wonderful interviews with VISTAs and with alums and there's some rich content on there. So feel free to contribute to the YouTube channel. And then on Flickr, um, these are photographs, and um, you and you can upload a photograph, and then we'll approve it and put it up there uh, for all to see. So it, it's um, another great visual for us to see what's going on around the country um, and also where we house our V is for um, campaign. Go to that now, Danielle. Sure. I'm going to scoot over there while you talk. Okay, Thanks. great. So some of you may have heard about this. Um, when you were at PSO, you should have gotten a little packet that promoted it and gave you a V pin, which hopefully you're wearing proudly around your community. But it's our um, way of um, really asking folks to answer the question, what does VISTA mean to you? Um, so people respond to that through pictures and also through the written word. Um, but there are pictures on here. You can see this is V is for Marie's in this case. Here we have a bunch of V, all these hands coming together representing community and working together. Um, there are some recent photographs that have been uploaded via for Liberty, and they have a bunch of vistas standing by the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. Um, there are other paths of a bunch of vistas standing on the steps of the state capitol in Montana, um, a bunch of vistas from NeighborWorks. 
um, having a meetup. So it's really just a way to have fun and create a visual that reflects some aspect of your service. So you can show your Vista Pride with your VPIN um, and then save and submit it either in a photograph or, or through the written word and share it on Flickr and YouTube or Twitter. So that's just a fun campaign that um, we encourage you to participate in. Hoping that um, at the end of each month we'll get an influx of photos, and at the beginning of the following month we will announce a winner, and they get featured in our social media sites. So we are hoping that you all will participate. But we're also hoping that this is a good example of how you can use a video campaign to continue to reach out to people and to talk to folks in a different way. Uh, this allowed us to have a whole other audience of people who maybe would not respond on Facebook or Twitter, but they like photography. And with iPhones and Androids and all the smartphones that are out there, it's very easy to snap a photo and upload it to the VS4 pool. And again, these may be people that don't want to engage with us verbally, but like to do their content um, visually either with a video or with a photo, and it's a great way to grow your community. So um, now we're going to go over to questions. I don't see any in the chat, but Vanessa, has anyone, do they have any questions out there? Good time. I would like to remind everyone, if you would like to ask a question, press star 1 on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to pile the Q&A roster. And while she's compiling the Q&A, if there are some stories that you want to share on how you're using social media, we would love to hear those as well. So even if you don't have a question, if there's something that we can cover that we should cover, we'd like to hear from you. And so I want to point out that we uh, have an evaluation that's coming up, and you'll see that on the um, right-hand side as it loads. And this helps us to uh, keep on track with our web shops and our webinars to make sure that we're giving you the information that you need to um, move forward in your service and that you got, you know, we can we use these to help us uh, guide the next round of webinars that we use for you all. So if you would take a moment, please, to fill that out. Um, Vanessa, any questions? No audio questions at this time. Okay, thank you so much. So we're just going to take it away, and she's going to go over some important things to keep in mind as you use social media. Yeah, the no fun part. Um, so the Hatch Act, hopefully you all are familiar with the Hatch Act. If you're not, please um, give yourself a refresher course by uh, viewing the member handbook, the VISTA member handbook. Um, in Chapter 14, it specifically outlines what you can and cannot do as a VISTA. Um, and because this is an election year, it's probably a really good idea for you to review these um, because you may innocently um, drive someone to vote or do something that you're really not supposed to do or, you know, lobby for a candidate with your Vista t-shirt on. You know, these kinds of things are not allowed, and you really need to be aware of it um, and uh, abide by the Hatch Act. Um, being tasteful and appropriate, hopefully um, on your personal Facebook pages, you are tasteful and appropriate as well. Um, just remember anything you put up there is completely public. So if you're looking for your next job, um, and you have, you know, a photo of you being um, that you want to reconsider and not post that. Um, so, and again, it's it's, an, it's a good idea to have a separate um, Facebook page, personal and professional. But always, always be tasteful and appropriate in, in all of your online presence because you never know who is going to take a look at your posts and your photographs. Um, staying safe online, you really want to protect yourself and your organization. So in your passwords in a secure place, don't share them with anyone. Um, be selective in choosing your new username and email address. Um, not giving out the information simply because it's requested. Blocking or ignoring unwanted users. Um, don't allow others to draw you into conflict. Watch what you say online and uh, never use a work account for our personal use. Uh, so that is clear, and you all will abide by these um, suggestions and rules, and um, hopefully all these tools will really help to enhance the work that you're doing, because that is the idea. I'll turn it back to you, Danielle. And so um, 
we hope that you enjoyed this particular web shop. As we promised, all of the available, all of the links that we talked about are available here. These are the Vista social media links, so feel free to click on those and also click through the campus to find out the tools that are available for you in social media. And we want to thank you for joining us. And um, you can go ahead and that click through. Thank you very much. So we want to thank you for um, joining us and. And uh, we're hoping that you visit again the VISTA campus to check out the fall Social Media Monday schedule and to keep the conversation going. Kim, one last call if anybody wants to share an example of how social media has really helped them in their um, work so far. Anybody want to share a success story or maybe something happened that, that you learned from? Do we mind opening the lines one more time, Vanessa? To ask a question, press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And Mike, we covered everything. Do you think we've um, left anything out? We talked to return on investment. Do you use um, Hootsuite to try to get your return on investment and to figure out um, who you reached and who you talked to? With our free version, with the free version of Hootsuite, uh, every week I would get a uh, an update saying, this many people clicked on the links, and uh, specifically on Twitter, these were the people who were sort of sharing what you were doing and mentioning you. So that was kind of a nice thing to see. And of course, also insights on Facebook. And if anyone else has anything that they would like to share and tell us how they're using social media, we'd love to hear from you now. Please hold for your first question. Again, please. All right, thank you. Your question, do you have your mute button on? Your first question of Don Vanderhuten. What's your question? Um, I recently am um, entered into a contest to win some funding for a project I've been working on, and I I am not real proficient in Twitter, but um, I was wondering how I go about getting um, the AmeriCorps alumni group ever behind my project. I need 500 votes <laughs> to get the $500 I'm a finalist for in this contest. Okay. Where are you located? Wisconsin. Okay. Um, I would suggest going to americorealums.org and you can look up the different chapters. And I would imagine there are several in Wisconsin. And you can get in touch with the uh, chairs of the AmeriCorps local chapters there, and they can help send out a message uh, to all the members that can help for us. Oh, great. That would be really helpful. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Liz, is AmeriCorps alums, is that .org or .com? It's .org. .org, okay. Mm -hmm. put that in the chat for everyone. Yeah. Else? Again, would like to ask a question. Press star one on your telephone keypad. For the questions, that uh, one please for your next question. Thank you. Michael, while we're waiting, like better for engagement for Campus Compact, was it Facebook or Twitter? Uh, I think I preferred Facebook because even though I think there were more 
that I had that one-on-one -on -one kind of a discussion with. Uh, I heard more um, sporadically, you know, positive things from people and that what was posted on Facebook, they actually clicked on it and they got, you know, their president to, to do something or something like that. Here's that Joe. Was... Hey. Next question comes from the line of Marie Extravaria. Marie, how can we help you? We are attending this webinar, and we were really hoping for um, sort of a walkthrough of showing us some really specific techniques and strategies for utilizing platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. Uh, where can we find those kind of resources? So um, there are two web shops. I think Stephanie has some. Um, there, there's one that's the top three and it talks about strategies for using these top three, and she's going to put them in the, in the chat, chat for you. And what is your organ? Who are you working for? While she's while she's oh talking, my gosh, my my phone was cutting off every time you were speaking every oh, word. Oh, sorry. Well, I think I, I think it's because you were on speaker. So can you just repeat that quickly? Yeah, I'm not on speaker. I um no I'm no, no I have oh, you on you speaker. speaker. I got you. Okay. So she's going to put some links in the um chat feature that are going to give that specifically delve into strategies. This was more of an overarching um, way of developing your plan and then using the tools okay. to to campus. So there are three links that are, should be showing up now in the chat feature. Perfect. And they're very specific on how you can use um, different tools. Now, what organization are you working for? Alternative Transportation. Okay. And you're a VISTA with them? Yes. Okay. What are you charged with? What is your goal? My goal as a VISA is to develop the capacity within this organization, um, improve outreach, and s sort of prove the networks between this organization and partners in my community. What's your social media? Have, knowing that is your mission, what's your social media goal? Oh, the social media goal? Yeah. Uh, I don't know that yet. So. See, that's what this webinar was for, because long before we jump into what you do and what your strategies are, I'd like you to back up and go to those first couple of slides and mm -hmm. really think about what your social media plan is to make sure that you have buy from your supervisors and really think about, write down and walk, what is it that you're trying to do? Are you trying to promote your organization? Are you trying to engage your organization? Are you trying to tell the story? Are you trying to promote something? Like these are things before you jump out there and you go to these other webinars, sure. What really think about how you're going to use the space and what kind of content that you have even to get started in the space. And okay. then I recommend that you go ahead and you look at these other webinars for strategy. But oftentimes we, um, we do not uh, think about what our goals are in the space and even mm -hmm. what kind of content we have before we jump out there. So I'm, I'm hoping that you and the other young lady that you said that is with you, that's working with you, that you guys just sit down and say, well, what is it that we're trying to do? Are we trying to get more publicity about what we're doing? Are we, you know, we use a lot of words that we use in yeah. terms of sustainability. And my, my organization has been using Facebook um, as their platform for over a year now, and so um, I can always talk to them and it, it, what it looks like to me is that they're using their goal, their social media goal is to engage the crowd and just uh, spread more awareness and, and engage the community to attend events and stuff like that. So I can just kind of piggyback off of that. And that's one of the things I think, Michael, you said you talked about. You spent a lot of time trying to figure out well, what was being done before, correct? Yes. Um, and you tell her, like, you looked at what was being done before and then how did you decide to jump out there? Uh, well, I had looked back at, at what was done before, and I saw that it was used um, kind of sporadically, and there wasn't a lot of real interaction. So I tried to – I looked back, and I saw that as part of my job, I'm kind of getting a lot of news, and I'm kind of a no in the office. So I tried to, to share as much as I could and try to, you know, gain some more interactions while kind of maintaining what was done before. Um, any tricks for her or anything you'd like to share with her that really worked that she might want to try out just starting out? Um, using Google Alerts. Um, oh, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. That was probably the most useful thing, except some days I would just have about 12 of them in my inbox. But <laughs> once I threw it all, it was it, I, I got some really solid things, and it helped me kind of connect with people, I think. 
anything that you wanted to add? Yes, I, I, I also want to say that um, I think it's important to get so excited about these tools, but start small. Um, and like you said, if your organization already has a Facebook page, that's great. Um, but for everybody, you know, I think it, you're like, oh, wow, this is so fun. Let me start a blog. Let me also have Facebook and Twitter. Well, you have to feed the beast. Uh, so you just keep in mind how much can you realistically manage in addition to whatever other duties that you might also be responsible for. So just start small and, and go from there. Help. Did that help at all, Don? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, well, we're just um, one minute past. If there's anyone else that wants to share, we certainly will take that question. And if not, we can continue this conversation online. Um, the link is right there to continue the discussion. We're so glad that you joined us. Anyone else have a question or would like to share something? Want me to you? Again, you would like to ask a question or make a comment, press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Nice that um, Jillian left some great links in the chat feature, so please don't jump off the call until you get those from um, Jillian Taylor. There were some great uh, links there, and we hope that you enjoyed this webshop. If there are no further calls or questions. Any questions at this time? Okay, thank mm -hmm. you all for joining us. Thanks, everyone. This does conclude today's conference call.